Alrighty, underneath the mobile home, and this is going to be a fun job. The complaint has been the smell of mildew, basement smell in the mobile home in, inside. So, crawled under here, I looked, looked, didn't see no sources of water. But then I finally got back over here to one end, and I seen where the insulation fell out. First I thought, well, some critter got in here and dug it all out, but then I had, caught, had the, the renter start flushing the toilet running water and I started seeing a few drops and right up there is the problem if I give it to it there so probably the wax wing has failed and so water's been dripping slowly a small drip got the insulation wet got so heavy it fell through created this big gaping hole so now with this big huge hole this the, the cold air return is just sucking all this humidity Right up into the house, really making a mess. So I got this big gaping hole to fix, and it's very tight. You can see, there's not much space under here. So here's my flashlight. So I got about that much space. So, and this is on the on the the side. It's got more space on on the other side. I got some more fixing to do over here, and it's even tighter. When I crawled back into there, I found a, a spot where the old air conditioner was hooked up that needs to be fixed. And it's a tight, you can't roll over. You either crawl in on your belly or crawl in on your back. Because it's a tight squeeze under there. So, yay, fun for me. Sorry, I gotta make my inventory list. What I need while I'm under here, I gotta, there, I gotta, get, I gotta get screws. I gotta get me some blue foam, long screws, impact wrench. Um, insulation, big old piece. I'll need um, a razor blade to cut this stuff out. Tape measure. Alright, make my mental list so I'll have everything I need hopefully in one trip. It ain't a whole lot of fun because look, there's where I gotta crawl. This is a 65 foot mobile home and there's my opening way, way down there at the other end. So that's a long haul. To, drag tools in and out but I guess that's what this week's job is going to be okay I told you I had another tight spot but well, here it is see the flashlight just barely fits under here that's that tight and I gotta go back in here where the old air conditioning hooked up there's a hole there and it's not insulated, water's dripping from it because the duct work is so cold hitting this humid air under the trailer. And it's dripping, you can see some drips of water. So I gotta crawl up under there and fix that spot too. So that's on my list. So I'll probably need about a four by four, three by three square there. Some big long screws and all that fun stuff. So, so here's the culprit. 1973, that's when that total was made. That's when the mobile home was built. And the floor is all rotted around it, soft. So that means the toilet's got to come up, and I got to tear out the flooring. Put in new flooring. So this job just keeps getting bigger as I go. That's the way it is. So let's get in. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is put a shutoff valve on the line because mobile homes, at least back in '73, I guess most of them are this way. They don't have shutoff valves at each uh, fixture like what the houses would have so that means you gotta you know sh shut off the source of water at the street or under or the trailer and you, you have no water throughout the whole house while you're making your repair so i'm going to cut the copper line use this compression fitting to put this an inline shut off valve so that way at least i got the water shut off now while i'm doing this repair and the rest of the mobile home will have water so that's something that should always do that's a real pain but they don't at least it is. So got the toilet up and here's what I found. It's amazing the toilet was still sitting there, it didn't fall through the floor. But there we go. So I get to cut all this out, reinforce things, get some plywood, and put it back together. Thought I'd point this out. This is why mobile homes and water don't mix. Look look what happens to this old particle board. I mean it just just dissolves, absolutely turns to dust. So but I will put back plywood. So this won't happen again. But absolutely keep the water, any leaks, out of your mobile home.
Okay, Nothing. here's a little tip. I'm getting the old flange. I took me a jigsaw somewhere. Here's a jigsaw. And I sliced all the way around so I could slowly chip away at the old flange. And so that way I can glue a new flange on here without going in and cutting all this old pipe out. But so far I've been able to break the old glue, glue loose. So uh, it, just, it just takes a little extra work to take your jigsaw or hacksaw blade, anything, and slice it a couple times. You can break it away. So we'll keep on uh, working on this and to see if I can't get, get it ready for and, the roof. And now I'm on the roof. Um, when I was down there working on the toilet, this is the vent coming up from uh, the toilet. And I noticed we had a downpour. I got a few drops of water coming down that vent line. So I come up here to look. The rubber boot is fine, but you can see you know, it doesn't seal real tight. So there's six of these things up here. So I got went and got me six hose clamps, and I'm gonna uh, clamp this around there to uh, keep that from happening anymore. So if it's happening on this one, it's happening on others too. So let's. That there we go. Nice tight fit. So no water will be coming down that any longer. But I think I am going to come up here with um, some more sealer. I see a, a little gap right here. I'll come up here and reseal this stuff. And I just got five more clamps to go and we'll get that all taken care of and hopefully I'll keep, keep water from coming down these Well, areas. I've uh, got my uh, reinforcement 2 before's in place and I'm, I'm getting ready to get my board cut to fix this floor but I was wanting to talk about this unique mobile home this is a I think it's called a Vendale is the is the brand manufacturer of this mobile home it's, a, it's a, I think it's a 24 by 60 or 64 something like that large mobile home it's built in 1973 this is actually my childhood home turned into a rental now I grew up here but what's unique about it, it this has something called a cold air belly return and I don't know when they stopped doing this. I don't, I don't think it's very common anymore. I think they probably complete, completely stopped doing it. But you notice, because uh, this is, is the floor, but then you have this little dead air space. And that's called, the, I guess, the belly of, of the motor home, or the mobile home. And then the, your insulation is, is down below. But if you notice, once you go under the floor, you can see all the way to the other end of the, of the trailer. All the way through so it's like the little 12 inch basement area completely under the, the mobile home and you can see right there is the duct work so the duct work is is not insulated it's just just metal and i guess the ideal is it draw every room has a cold air return vent you have a you have this duct work where you you see it right there see there's a piece, a piece of duct going up here into the bathroom and there's an yeah, so there's one. This one's to the bathroom. This other little ductwork is going into the into the next bedroom. And then every room also has a cold air return cut into it. So when a furnace kicks on, it draws the air down through this chamber, this area, and then back up through the furnace opening, and blows it all out through the house. So I guess one nice idea about it: all your water pipes and all your drain pipes, everything is kept warm. In this area and I've read online where some people close this system off when they upgrade their heat pumps or furnaces and they they seal it off completely but I'm gonna leave it open I really don't know which it's better because I thought well if you seal it off then you got all this dead air space under here and you the floor would get colder I would assume maybe have you'd have a chance of freezing of, of your pipes because you see there's no insulation no, right under the floor at all. The insulation is down here at the bottom of the belly. So that's why it's important to make sure the belly is sealed up well. See, so I had this problem with this big gaping hole. That really that caused us the, the problem with the mobile home was getting that smell because it's drawing all the humidity and that, that wet insulation right up through the, the trailer, blowing it, blowing it throughout the house. So I'm going to get this buttoned up, then i got to patch this big hole here and put in more insulation. So let's get on with that journey. Okay, now the fun really begins. So now I'm underneath the trailer on my back, this tight little spot I can't really turn over in. And you can see the hole from the bottom side. It's, it's, 
chewed. And see, there's the, the, the drain pipe for the toilet. And then I'm fixing to take care of. And you can see what, what they call that cold air belly return. It's all up in here. But of course, I gotta sit, because I'm, I'm right now I can feel the air being drawn right up through this hole into the house because the air conditioner is on. So, my goal is I got this thick styrofoam board. I'm gonna come under here and seal this hole up. Put me a bunch of screws in it, and uh, then I'll go back upstairs and re insulate all this like it's supposed to be. So, that's what we'll do next. Okay, I'll crawl back here a little bit further. Try to give you an idea of what I got patched and how I did it. This little metal strips I used, these are, I think, starter strips for when you hang vinyl siding. I had this stuff left over, and it worked out really well because it's got all these holes in it. Of course, you just can't run a screw up through this blue styrofoam, but by running a screw up into this metal, it's, it forces it up. It makes it good and tight all the way across there. And I did the same thing over here. Then I cut me a, a half circle. I split my styrofoam when I came to this pipe. So I did a half circle on one side and a half circle on the other. And then I put my good some good foil tape on there. So I've got most of this part done. There's one more place I've got a patch on the other end of, end of the trailer. Really, really tight. It's tighter than this end. And then I'll go upstairs and fill it back full of insulation and try to get this project over with. This has not been much fun at all. On my way out, I came across this section right here. And this is the double wide trailer. And this is actually where they, this is the spot where they bolt them together. You can see the big bolt right there. It's where they bolt the two halves together. One of the, one of the bolts. And then this is the, um, the pipes is where they make the connection for the pipes. I just had a flashback. I remember being a kid when the winter got really cold. I don't know, 10 below, zero, whatever. But it got cold enough, these pipes actually froze. And I remember my dad, he, my dad sent me under there with a, um, with a clothes, uh, an iron, what you iron clothes with. He had me take that iron and hold it up against these pipes until they thawed out and the water started flowing again. And it worked. And, uh, so while I'm under here and I got some of this foam left, style foam left over, I'm going to screw that up into this and uh, keep that, because it's never, I don't think it's ever froze up again because we usually, the, the runner leaves the water dripping when it's really get really cold, but I'll seal this up and make it a little bit better while I'm under here. There we go. Got those two holes sealed up, so hopefully they'll, they'll never freeze up ever again. Got that done. Now to climb way back to the other end. Focus, yeah, way other end and get that one last piece sealed up. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, but we've also got bones. Some kind of critter got under here and made it as his final resting place. So that's interesting. You never know what you're gonna find underneath a place. So if you're claustrophobic, this spot is not for you. So that's, you can see the gaping hole up there. I need to fix that. But you can see what a little spot I got to climb into. Because here's the beam. It's got a little bit, but in the center it opens up a little bit more. But all the way across the, the side of it here, it's very low. I don't know, maybe 13 inches at the most. So I have to slide in on my back to, to get up in there and, and patch that hole. And so that'll be fun. It's like a nice comfortable place to take a nap. Okay, if you can see I'm back up under here. I've got that much space between me and my tummy. And I'm a skinny fella. So that is pretty tight working conditions. And there's my, it's all that water dripping. So I gotta get that insulated and sealed up. Cause I can feel cold air blowing around this. Nice cold air in it. So, a lot of water. So, yep, yeah, tight spot, tight spot. Okay, so I've got that sealed up. But while I was under here, I just had another flashback. I could remember being a kid, and my dad sent me under here. He always had me do the dirty work. Well, I was uh, small, I guess. He couldn't fit under either. So, uh, but anyway, I remember a piece of this duck work had come off. 
So it was my job to get under there and attach it, tape it back up. And I can remember, as soon as I got under there, real tight, couldn't roll over, can't get out very quickly. I moved the duck work, and what did I see but a big snake. But thank goodness, because I kind of froze, there wasn't a whole lot I could do. Thank goodness it was already dead. <laughs> so, but that was a, an interesting thing, seeing that snake underneath here. So far, I haven't seen no snakes this time. And uh, so there's the opening. Oh yeah, let's check this out. Shag carpet right here. 1973 shag carpet. Uh, and this is when they, this is a remnant, I guess, when they put put it together, they had some left over. So somehow it ended up underneath here. But uh, January 1973 shag. It's coming back, they say. Now, thank goodness I'm back upstairs now. We're in the mobile home. And that's what it looks like from above now. So, it all looks pretty good and tight. And I'm gonna put more insulation all back in here. Screw my floor down. And put down new flooring, set the toilet and all that other stuff. It's not over yet. So everything's insulated now. Ready to put the floor in. Screw all that down and getting closer to wrapping this project up. Boy, it's been fun. Just all kinds of fun. Okay, well, I think this project should pretty much wrapped up finally. Started on it late last night, got finished up tonight, or you know, the next day. So, it was some dirty grunt work, but now it's over. All I gotta do is come back and put down some vinyl planking. I'll just I'll just do the whole bathroom floor. It's very small, so it won't take much. But I've been using that, um, it's called Vinyl Planking by Congolium, which I think is the brand name. Really good stuff, especially for bathrooms, because it's uh, water won't harm it. It's a floating floor. It goes down quick. Looks good. And so I'll finish that up in a few days. Oh, and what you see here, that's that black that is on um, tire paper. I put that down because the plywood that I installed was a hair bit thinner than the um, particle board that uh, was original. So by putting that down on top of it, it gets me back to level. So when I put the planking material down, it'll all be the, the, a nice smooth surface along with the the other vinyl here. So that's what I do. So I guess this project's over. On to the next project. I'm sure there'll be another one. Thanks for watching. See ya.